<clears throat> Welcome back to Sikistan. Today we've got something a little bit different for you today. So recently, literally in the last two or three days, a gentleman on Reddit known as Mr. You Are So Dumb runs a company by the name of Nootropics Depot. He owns a lab. He's a video of his lab. He sells nootropics from what I'm aware of. I don't know this individual. I don't know anything about him. But he recently tested a couple of different turkesterone products on the market. And one of those turkesterone products was Gorilla Minds turkesterone. So this is Derek's more plates, more dates, supplement turkesterone. He also tested Gorilla Minds Sigma product. Now, there's a lot of stuff in this. For some of you who don't know, if you're new to the channel, if you just happened on this or you're newer to the channel in the last year or so, a lot of the OG viewers will know that in a previous life, I worked in QC in pharmaceutical for quite a long time. I worked as an analyst in a variety of different labs. I worked in a small scale biofuels lab. I worked in a contract food kind of supplement lab in conjunction with, we also made stuff and tested uh, painkillers. And then finally for four years, I worked in a large scale multinational operation where I worked as an analyst testing oncology drugs and diabetic drugs in a lab. Quite high volume and a long time as an analyst, too long as uh, anyone else who works in a lab will know it's uh, too much time. So first of all we just need to quickly run over what happened, go read the reddit thread, go read Mr. You're So Dumb's spiel if you want and go read the comments on more plates more dates subreddit. Long story short, he tested the turkesterone. The turkesterone was approximately 111 times less than what was stated on the bottle. He found that it was mostly beta ectosteroids and not actually turkesterone. A very, very limited amount of turkesterone is present. And then on the sigma side of things, the Gorilla Sigma, there was very little or if any of the compound present at all in the supplement that was being sold. Now, Derek Moore plates for dates. Provided some test results, but very limited and from a pretty poor form of testing from a company that we'll talk about in a second. Before we go over the results, I'm going to run through the basic principles of the test Mr. You Are So Dumb did. So we can give you an idea of what's going on and it'll help you understand it, hopefully, a little bit better. Now, over to the blackboard. Okay, so what we're going to go through first before we go through the results is some of the main tests that we use and the most important ones to take note of for the tergesterone. We're not going to go too much into the sigma testing. It's the tergesterone that is the main one I kind of want to focus on today. And I'm going to talk about two of the tests we use. One of them, the UV Viz, was the results, or the only results we've gotten from Gorilla Mind. And then this HPLC is the method by which my Mr. You're So Dumb is his name on Reddit provided his results with are a very basic principle of these. So these two tests incredibly common in the industry across food supplements, pharmaceutical, any kind of any kind of lab testing work, UV Viz will see in most labs and you'll see a HPLC in the vast majority of labs as well, if not the primary piece of testing equipment across a host of industries. So the principles for both of these, very, very simple. The inaction, the process, the development behind methods, the development of the piece of equipment Obviously, it took decades of science, but the principles are very, very simple for how the machines work. So for the UV-Vis, very, very simple. This flow of the actual diagram matches the flow of equipment, and how it would be in real life. So what we have is a light source. In this case, it is our UV ultraviolet light source. Inside our sample holder, it goes our cuvette. It is clear, perfectly clean glass, oftentimes made of different materials, not always glass, can be sometimes plastic, sometimes silica. Inside this, then we place our sample, our known sample. It is uh, known and diluted to a particular range. Oftentimes we're only confirming that range and this will be, become more relevant to us later when we're talking about some of the results. So our sample goes in here and then at the other side of our sample is our detector. Now you can probably guess what goes on here. Our light source shines into our sample, then whatever essentially doesn't pass through or what's passed through and reflected in a certain mechanism or absorbed by the sample holder goes to the detector software then processes this and gives us data out on the other end of the screen so this is very very simple it is in theory in you know kind of logical thinking the uv vis detector is very very simple in its mechanism and it is very basic in its results so think about that later but that's how uv vis works nice and easy so coming out to HPLC, so HPLC stands for High Performance Liquid Chromatography. There is other variations of these. There is literally tens of thousands of methods unique to each sample that you're testing, whether it's pharmaceutical ingredients, it's medicine, food, uh, raw materials, whatever it is, there is 
literally thousands of different methods, thousands of different variables and components that go together to make up HPLC methods that are all unique to the particular thing we're testing for. But the principle across all HPLC methods is very, very similar and the concept is very, very simple again, I think. So we have our machinery here. We don't need to know much about the machinery, how it works. All we know is we have our sample mixing and then we have what's known as our sample injector. This is a pump. We have a lot of solvents and liquid here. We have our pre-prepared samples, again, diluted to a known or estimated concentration, oftentimes confirmed with a UV, for example. This is placed into our HPLC or piece of equipment. It takes them out and then runs it through what is known as a column. So a column is quite simple to understand in practice. Obviously making them and developing columns, again, is high levels of expertise, very, very expensive and takes a lot of work and knowledge of, of course, chemistry. So what happens is we have our method set up, we know what our method is, and we are figuring out a method based on what our sample is, and this takes a lot of time, of course, again. So simply what happens, our HPLC injects or passes through our sample mixed with some solvents through our column. Now what a column could be is any different variety of combinations of things. So we could be looking at for example, uh, if you imagine the column is a very thin cylinder and inside that then is different chemical structures. And what these chemical structures do is depending on what method you will be using, will, for example, uh, separate out the molecules of the sample you're testing. And then based on charge, based on size, combination of charge and size, or any different number of things you're trying to test for, will then what's known as elute these out over a period of time. You know, this could be from 15 minutes to several hours of time. So it runs these through whatever method you have set this for, and it essentially forces them through this column. So this separates them out, passes them through the column. At the other side, then they are separated out into the desired structures or the desired format that you want. This then, this liquid then passes through in front of the detector again. So this is, these can be UV vis detectors or there can be other kinds of detectors, but essentially they shine a light on the material that's passed through the column. So the column is separated out. Maybe it's let the biggest ones out. Maybe first, maybe it's less the ones with the highest negative charge out first. So any number of different things, doesn't really matter for this case, but the principle is the same. Forces them through the column, passes in front of the detector, the detector does its job and detects them, takes this to our software and gives us results that then we can interpret, which we will move to now. Okay, so what we need to do now is interpret the results provided to us by the gentleman known as Mr. You Are So Dumb. I wish I knew his real name so I didn't have to keep calling him Mr. You Are So Dumb, but this is the world we live in and this is the video we're making. So long story short, Mr. You Are So Dumb runs a Reddit subreddit called Neutropics Depot. I think this is his company as far as I'm aware, and they also sell supplements. I believe the reason they even began this was he often used to do this before, according to these posts, and then he was going selling some targesterone or basic ectosterone supplements and began testing ones on the market, and turns out he found all this stuff. Now we'll get to some of that stuff later as well. So we have a video of his lab. This appears to be, a, if this is actually his lab, then, you know, this looks like a lab, all this piece of equipment that he's describing in his tests, he appears to be in possession of here. I have no reason to doubt this, but also we have no way of verifying this. So there is indeed a lab presence and it is interesting to see the video and that's all we can really say about that one. Now on the results. So when we run any kind of testing in a laboratory in a QC environment, we have to run what is known as standards or reference standards. We refer to these as the gold standards. You buy reference standards from companies like Sigma, Honeywell, uh, LGC, stuff like that. So you, you buy these reference standards of a known purity, of a known quantity, of a known concentration, and then you run these through your systems to confirm that you know what a reference standard would look like. So in these examples, Mr. You Are So Dumb ran two standards or he provided us with at least two different standards of the turkesterone powder that he's gotten from a supplier. So both of these, as you'll see here on the screen, are two injections. So oftentimes you'd run multiple injections of your reference standard through your system to ensure repeatability and to ensure that nothing funky happens on the following injections. And then you know exactly what it looks like. So you build up a kind of 
train of accountability in this scenario. So we've got two injections, they're essentially overlaying on each other. Now you remember we talked about the light detector on the HPLC. So this is on this side, these AU or absorbance units is just essentially a method of measurement developed by Agilent and other people who develop chromatography or high performance circuit chromatography is a, a unit they essentially made up based on the system and the light coming through. So you don't need to worry about what these units are mean. These essentially are consistent via the systems and then we can say that they are consistent across injections. That's all that we need, need to concern about here. And then they're consistent then in relation to our calculations. Across the bottom then minutes, we will have what is known as a, this is the length of time these injections taken or whatever section of injection he zoomed in on and gives us a particular time frame for that. So you'll see down here in the bottom RT 6.947 is relation to and refers to retention time. So retention time is the time at which the sample that we were testing or which particular peak we're looking at eluted out at. So retention times stay consistent across samples. So if something is what it is, we'll know that a retention time, if prepared correctly and prepared with the correct method, ran on the correct system with the correct column, will elute at this particular retention time consistently within a certain variance of uh, deviation. So these deviations are quite specific when you get to very high quality and highly regulated labs. So these deviations would be less than, you know, maybe one, two, three, maybe half a percent at times, depending on what you're looking at. So these deviations, we can say, if we run a reference standard and we get a certain retention time, so for example, 6.9 here, we'll know that plus or minus maybe 0.2 minutes that this will be our peak of interest. So these peaks, are then labeled there by the use of the software Empower, which is a very common software used. They will do what is known as integration of the curve or integration under the curve. So you remember from your school maths or maybe your, your college maths, depends on what you did, integration gives you the calculation or gives you the area under a curve. So then you would integrate these, the software would do this and you would put some inputs in and you get some inputs out and get some numbers and essentially we have then the area under the curve and this would then allow us to calculate the concentration of something. So we've got our two reference standards here. Then we have a reference standard for beta ectosterone. Now you'll see in the reference standard for tercesterone our retention time is 6.94 and then 6.95. So again very little variance between these reference standards and we know that our retention time is 6.9 approximately for tercesterone. Now we know beta ectosterone is quite similar to tecasterone, so we'd expect the reference standard retention time for beta ectosterone to come out at a quite a similar time. So we got 8.75. You'll notice then the absorbance units or the AUs or the height these peak reached was quite different. So we're at, at like 0.2 probably here, but then for tecasterone peaks at a given concentration, we're at 0.07 probably. So then what we've got is we've got our two reference standards. We know what tecasterone looks like. We know what our reference standard for beta ectosterone looks like. So this is through our HPLCs again, lest you've forgotten. So then we're going to run our Gorilla Mind Tercesterone product. And supposedly, this is the results this gentleman got for his tercesterone. So you'll remember, so we'll go check our reference standard again. We have 6.9, back to our sample, 7.3, so quite close. We'll check our reference standard for beta ectosterone, 8.75. Here we go back, we've got 9.1. So again, reasonable variance. Uh, we've got some other extraneous peaks here. This is likely just fillers in relation to what else is in the product. Uh, it wouldn't be possible to eliminate these and it's not something you need to be particularly worried about unless it looked fucking mental. So as again, we'll go to our standard of our ectosterone. Or we'll go to our standard of our tecresterone. We'll look at the AUs for a given concentration. Now usually your reference standards and your samples would be diluted to the same concentration or very, very similar to allow comparison, but also to give us better uh, results when we're doing our calculation in the finale. So we've got our tergesterone absorbent units are 0.07 approximately. And then for our one in our sample, we are 0.003 by the looks of things. So massively lower tergesterone present in our gorilla mind sample as compared to our reference standard. So a huge drop off. If you look at our beta ectosterone, we've got approximately 0.03. But then if you go to our reference standard for beta ectosterone, we're at 0.2, for example. So again, a huge discrepancy there. 
Now, this may be a difference in concentration calculations, which he didn't say, for example, but these should be quite similar. You would prepare a reference standard that is massively above the reference standard or the concentration of your sample you're looking at. So when you look at these, you'll see the area under the curve will be drastically smaller. Uh, Empower will give you those results and you can set up these calculations for Empower to give you these results and it'll give you pass or fail criteria and metrics to go by. And Empower will calculate this for you automatically and you'll get fail. And if you're running this in a lab, you would be like, oh, fuck. But in his case, he obviously was well, probably a little bit happy about this realistically, considering he's going to be selling his own beta egg this year on. So if this actually is Gorilla Mind Turcasterone, we've got fuck all Turcasterone in this. And we've got a whole lot more beta ectosterone present in this sample. So you provided calculations. Calculations without the actual calculations involved are kind of meaningless. Interesting that he gave us the calculations anyway, but there we go. So what we've gotten there is the supposed, and we just need to be careful about that, is the supposed results for his reference standards, which I think are probably real, reference standard for beta ectosterone and turkesterone. And then we have got supposedly turkesterone injected from Gorilla Mind into the system at the same time. These look like chromatograms. Empower is a software using HPLCs. These are HPLC results. All of this makes sense from an outside point of view if we're trusting everyone involved. I don't know anyone involved. I don't know Derek. I don't know Mr. You, swear, you are so dumb. But this is the theory behind this, assuming everything is true. If everything is what he says is true, then it looks like the sample he tested had very little, if anything, turkesterone. He said it was approximately 111 times less than the label claims. So that is not fucking good if you're trying to buy a supplement. Now, from here, we need to look at something else. So obviously this was in done to more plates, more dates, Reddit, and he posted the results not of a HPLC analysis for tecasterone. He posted the results for UV Viz for tecasterone. So we'll just focus on tecasterone for this one because there's probably, you know, there's too much more to go into. So this is from a company called ABC Testing or Advanced Botanical Con Consulting and Testing Inc. So you know, random third party company that does testing for people. So you'll see on the screen, it is UV Viz testing, and then we've gotten some results. Uh, so we don't have any actual input or output data from them. We don't have any calculations or anything. So they're saying this meets their spec, long story short. This is borderline meaningless when we're looking at this from an investigative uh, place. So you want to see the system, you don't want to see the results, you don't want to see uh, the recording of their preparations, uh, the materials they used, the lot numbers and all that stuff if you want to get really specific with this stuff. But you don't really need to worry about the results they got. They're going to say they passed. Otherwise, he wouldn't provide results that didn't say they passed, of course. The most important thing here, though, is to see that he used UV Viz for tecasterone. Now, that's a big problem. And I'll tell you why. Unless they could provide very good answers to why they used UV Viz for identification of tecasterone, I think it is a, a huge glaring issue that I'm surprised that they would have done with. You would never ever use UV Viz as an identification method in isolation. You would use UV Viz as a quantification because when you're using UV, you would often look at percentage or you're looking at the concentration, milligrams per milliliter uh, when you're using UV. You never really put something in, you never put an unknown into your UV Viz and then think you're going to get some meaningful results. Anyone who runs UV would know that that is just not a thing you do. That doesn't, it barely makes sense to be honest. You would run UV Viz on something that you know is uh, your sample or you're very, very sure of. And then if you're not very sure, you're also running other tests. Now, in conjunction with other tests, UV Viz is very, very useful because it's confirmation of your concentration in your sample and it's additional data. It's kind of an ancillary data that you conglomerate together at the end of the report and you can say this is for sure tecasterone this is our hblc this is your uv this is our c all these different tests okay so the use of uv in this scenario by itself in isolation is incorrect it's borderline useless you've no idea now the problem here is that as you saw ectisterone and tecasterone look very very similar so you remember from the diagram we showed that essentially all you're looking at is basically the shadow or the lack of a shadow from your sample in your cuvette. So it's like showing a, an analogy would be, we shine a light, a silhouette onto a piece of board and you would see that it is a human, but you've no idea what human that is. And it's similar for tecasterone and ectisterone. They are very, very similar looking. 
So while you would have ecdysterone present in your sample and you have turkesterone present in your sample, both of these will add up to a certain concentration and then we'll get the result that says greater than 10%. So we have plenty of our turkesterone, assuming it's wrongly, in this case, if the results are true, we're assuming wrongly that it is turkesterone when the vast, vast majority of that was likely ecdysterone. So we have two things, we're literally looking at the absorbance, we've no real identification of an individual substance. Multiple different things could have the same results or same absorbance as your tocasterone or your ectosterone. So if UV-Vis is the only testing that they've done, then someone dropped the ball hard here is to be honest is what I'm getting from this. Now that said, there could be a whole host of other HPLC testing done and maybe didn't provide the results. However, I don't know why they would provide UV. Maybe this was an, an incident. I'm more than willing to see that they did HPLC testing on this as well and they provided results. So I think that's enough of the results to that. Uh, there's probably more we can go into, but I'm trying to hold your attention and I don't want to lose you. Okay, so let's wrap this up. So there's a lot of assumptions here. I don't know anyone involved. I don't know Mr. You Are So Dumb. I don't know more plates, more plates. I don't know Derek. I don't know, I've never used their supplements. I've never used this other gentleman supplements. A couple of different things here that could be going on. It could be that they knew and they tested Gorilla Minds. They tested their samples, didn't get the results they wanted from the HPLC. The UV provided those results. And that's the only reason they're releasing the results. It could be that this gentleman from Nootropics Depot is currently going to be selling ecdysterone. He's saying that all the other tocasterone samples on the market were bunk. And he's saying suppliers find it very, very difficult to get that. And suddenly his sample is the only one that with tocasterone in it, which is very possible too. I think the only real way we'll know from this, uh, if in the end what is actually going on, is realistically, this gentleman is in America. Uh, more place for dates i think is based in canada i think gorilla mind is based in america it could be, i could be wrong on that though anyway long story short i think what we're likely to see the results the future actions of both parties involved will probably tell a lot about this if derek makes a video about this in six months time saying he's investigated nootropics depot mr so you are so dumb's lab they sued them via some legislation for defamation of their stuff and fraudulent activity and they didn't actually test derek's gorilla mind turkestrone at all they tested something else and they got different results from purpose to make it look bad then i would think that we would know that derek and gorilla minds made their best effort and they actually had those samples and all is rosy and there was nothing wrong with their samples and all this is all a big marketing scene by nootropics depot and it was a big load of bullshit uh, which I genuinely, you just don't know, people are crazy and there's a whole shitload of money on the line here. So that scenario, I think, is incredibly likely. Knowing neither of these parties, I've no idea if that is that, if that would happen or not, or if it did happen or not. The other option here is that we hear nothing from Derek from more plates for dates. They no longer talk about this. They don't bring it up in any manner. There's no video. There's no additional stuff done. There's no further testing released from the... Uh, the company, the third party testing. In this scenario, this looks pretty bad, I think, for Derek from More Place for Dates or anyone selling turkesterone. If you can't validate that, if this dude is calling out everyone's turkesterone, then I think that doesn't look great. Now, finally, there's one big thing we need to talk about for this ABC or Advanced Botanical Testing Laboratory. They have a full written letter from the FDA. Now, I cannot express, if anyone works in the pharmaceutical industry watching this will back me up on this. If you get a letter from the FDA, this is not a slap on the wrist. Getting a letter from the FDA is someone holding you in a fucking body triangle while someone else goes to town on you without any Vaseline. Getting a letter from the FDA is a big fucking deal. I read the letter from the FDA. It's public. These are all made public. You read them online and it essentially tears their whole laboratory practices apart. It tears their record keeping, their good manufacturing processes at the part. They don't have any calibration of their systems. They don't have any calibration of their instruments, poor reference standard keeping, poor record keeping, no record keeping or terrible record keeping of their materials and methods and how they were doing each one of these methods. All of the stuff that you should be doing as a third party lab, like all the stuff that you should be doing to be a good lab. So this provides us then with the third scenario. This lab just blatantly lied to Derek and was like, okay, this is the test we did, it's all fine. Derek believed them. And I feel like at the at what level are you held accountable for in our lab? I don't know. I, I you are ultimately in the day responsible for what you're selling people when they put it into their bodies. So I feel 
the onus relies on Derek in this scenario, but you could forgive him or at least lay part of the blame on this lab who apparently seems to have terrible, terrible conditions for a lab. Like, I cannot emphasize that enough. Getting a letter from the FDA is not over small things. If they send you a letter, a public letter, it means you fucked up big time and you have a lot of shit wrong. And judging by that letter, there is a lot of stuff wrong. So it could be that Derek thought they were selling Tercasterone and given the principles, I suppose, of him selling out routinely and not socking it again for months, that could be the case. And they thought they were really getting stuff. And it's very possible the third option is this lab was bullshitting them all the way and telling them this is perfect. So we may never know. We'll see what comes of this. Uh, I just wanted to express my, I suppose, technically expertise in this area in regards to this or just give you the low, low down and kind of help you understand it a little bit better as it's unlikely this kind of thing will come up often <laughs> again for me. So I might as well put it to use uh, so you guys can get a better understanding. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed understanding it. I enjoyed going through it, to be honest. It was something very, very interesting to me. I don't have a horse in the game. I don't have any... I don't know either of these gentlemen. I don't sell any competitor supplements to them. I almost certainly... Or we will almost certainly... We almost certainly never will sell supplements in relation to what they're selling. There's one supplement we'll be coming out with in the near term. As a lot of you might have an idea what that is, but we'll talk about that later. I'm watching this with interest because we were talking a lot about the testing we'll need to do. And I was thinking about all of the investigative work I'll need to do on the people who manufacture for us and all the investigative work on the third party testing we would get done and have to go through it. This again, just reaffirms how fucking important that is and how much of a scam things could be. It's also made me question all the supplements I'm taking at the moment. So the zinc, magnesium and B6, uh, thinking boron as well taking those things at the moment makes me wonder are they actually what they are so be careful what you take kids would i take gorilla mind stuff after seeing this certainly not if those are true because are you going to take the chance i don't know i wouldn't um so let me know if you enjoyed the video please leave a like and a comment if you did enjoy the video if you got to the end i would really appreciate that if you're new to the channel feel free to stick around and subscribe like comment all that good shit uh, and I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it made things a little clearer. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. It's very possible other people will be also related to industry, might start talking about it as well. I assume a lot of people will have some knowledge in this area. But I really appreciate you guys watching this far and I hope you enjoyed the video.